from the small village of Ewin, from the community of Palo Seco, from the twin island of Trinidad and Tobago, a small library operation was birthed in 1991 at a humble open Bible church. Now blossoming as a business and ministry network across 40 nations, Anointing Oil Dynamics Limited is a hub of influence of leaders and Christian workers as the name, ministry and work of Jesus Christ of Nazareth is promoted. Anointing Oil Dynamics brings unique training packages to many, online manuals, a base of Christian films, Hebraic and Christian products from the land of Israel and assist in the returning of Jews back home. Thank you for selecting this product. Please visit us at www.anointingoildynamics.com or email us at anointingoildynamics at yahoo.com. We trust that the love of God will be shared in your hearts through this presentation as we use the eye gate to motivate. Female logic is extremely hard to understand. No wonder it's so difficult to imagine what makes the perfect man who can win a woman's heart. Today in this video we will tell you some male qualities that will make every woman lose her mind. If you have at least half of these traits, you are guaranteed to have successful relationships with women. Number 1. Masculinity. Masculinity is a combination of such qualities as fortitude, generosity, courage, and nobility. This is a set of traits that smart women can't resist. Number 2. Sense of humor. A funny joke is a great icebreaker. However, too many jokes may not help you to make a good impression. You will be nothing more than a clown to her, and she won't take you seriously. But if you have a good sense of humor, you are lucky, most women associate this quality with a high level of intelligence. Number 3. Taking care and paying attention. Everyone loves attention and wants to be taken care of. Women also consider these qualities as great characteristics of a good father for her future kids. Number 4. Determination and high energy. Some feel that men are the ones who should make decisions based on what is better for both of you. There are women who don't like to take responsibility for making decisions, nor do they like lazy and spiritless men. If you want to become a total woman magnet, you need to be very ambitious and enthusiastic. Number 5. Generosity. This is not just about money. For example, not everyone can be generous with their attention. It can be demonstrated through making someone else feel good. You can be generous by showing your love and expressing positive emotions. Number 6. Being romantic. A romantic man is something women can't resist. He turns her life into a non-stop celebration of their feelings and makes her feel loved all the time. Number 7. Uniqueness. He is not like everybody else. He is the one and only. Women often think that their other half is unique. It's easier to fall in love with someone who is special. Number 8. Dependability. There is no guarantee that your new relationship is going to last forever. However, it's easier to believe it will if you are a dependable person. Number 9. Understanding. There are days when you just want someone to understand you without making you explain your thoughts and feelings, sometimes without even making you talk. That usually becomes possible when you have been living together for years. However, sometimes you meet a person who immediately makes you feel like you've known each other forever. It feels so warm and cozy when you are together. Number 10. Good Manners. This quality is in very high demand nowadays. There are many real gentlemen left. If you know and follow etiquette rules, you have a significant advantage over others. Number 11. Being handy around the house. A handyman service is called a husband for a day for a reason. Being handy around the house is a very valuable quality for all men. 
Some women are not very good with nails and a hammer and will definitely appreciate your help. Number 12. Intelligence. We are not talking about your IQ score here. If you are a wise and fair-minded man who thinks carefully before making decisions, you will probably make a good family guy. Some women prefer to relax and rely on their man. Number 13. Height. According to British women, the ideal height for a man is 5 feet 11 inches. In general, women prefer to date a man who is approximately 4 inches taller than she is so she can wear high heels for a date. Spread the love with your boy or girl and don't forget to hit the like button. Press the bell icon on YouTube app. And never miss another update. Subscribe our channel now. Thank you for watching.
you, Sister Sandra. Let's stand. Hallelujah to Jesus. Father, we thank you for the power of the blood. The blood that has never lost its power. We continue to remember, O oh Lord, that had it not been for the blood, would not have been here. And we give you the praise and the honor even now. We thank you for those that are already in our mid. And Lord, you'll continue to minister, strengthen, empower, intervene in their lives, O oh Lord. So many battles that are raging against us, but we recognize that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We recognize, O oh Lord, that the greater one lives in us, and you have planned no defeat for us. We recognize that though there be giants in the land, O oh Lord, things beyond what we can conquer. We recognize, O oh Lord, even as you, as Elijah prayed for his servant, that their eyes be opened to see that there are more that are for us than those that are against us. And we lift our eyes onto the hill, someone's come at our help. We lift our eyes above what we are facing, above our financial nightmares above our relationship conflict and we look to you the author and finish off our faith god you are more than able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think because you are greater you seated on the throne and you are high and lifted up and nothing takes you by surprise and more than that lord we know that you love to give good gifts to your children so this morning we ask for the bread this morning we ask for the fish. This morning we even ask for the Holy Spirit. For the Father gives it liberally. And your word even for this is that while we're asking, you're already delivering. We continue to thank you, Lord, for the charged atmosphere this morning. Even as we get into the beauty of your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Thank you, singers, musicians. Support ministers, give them a hand of appreciation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Last week we talked a lot about mailman and we talked about the robustity of a gentleman. Today I want to continue along the same vein and I want to take you back to Genesis chapter 5. And we're going to look at some, uh, another section or another element of what we have shared the last day. Genesis chapter 5, we want to pick it up from verse 1. This is a book of the generations of Adam in the day that God created man. In the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day that they were created. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good. Everybody say not good. That the man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. Genesis chapter 2. I uh, want to roll from verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. Holy lady say, thank God he sleep. <laughs> and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone in flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken up. Out of. Everybody say taken out of. Man. Jeremiah 31, 22. Lots of people afraid this verse. They didn't even realize Jeremiah saw this. How long would thou go about, O backsliding daughter? For the Lord has created a new thing in the earth. Everybody say a new thing. A woman shall come past a man. This morning, I want to share along the lines and title, The Womanity of Humanity. 
the humanity of humanity. Bring up the rest of the elements. The prominence, awareness, and role and function of women in our generation today is one that has taken the front line in modern society. The influence of sin in our world system has always been in the process of separation and division. All of its teaching focus on the competition rather than working together, such as the concepts of the battle of the sexes or woman is boss. Each person is feeling or feeling his or her pride by declaring, I can do better. When the truth is that you and I are here to help another by working in harmony. We need to remember that God is no respecter of persons. And he will use those that are available for his will to flow through them. You are successful in using an apparatus if you understand how it works. Design reveal purpose. Anything that is used outside of original design will lead to abuse and misuse. When we recognize the original intent of the manufacturer, we understand purpose. Men and women are different because of purpose and design. We are different not to compete but to complement and assist by submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord. As a member of the human race, you will learn in this world that life is not fear. The number one problem in this life is relationship with other people. I'll say that again. The number one problem in this life is relationship with other people. And that's why sometimes when they encounter that, some people wish they could go and live somewhere in some bush by themselves. <laughs> when sin entered the human race, it destroyed relationship first, both relationship to God and relationship within the human family and even relationship with the elements of this world. Jesus came to restore Relationship between God and man. Are you there with me? We must understand how we function and operate before we can understand another person. Most people don't even understand themselves, but they try to correct others. And sometimes they'll be trying to correct themselves in others. Woman is God's special gift to man so that he can have a companion. In life. However, some women have broken the historical record, such as Ruth, Esther, Phoebe, Rebecca, Mary, Rachel, Sarah, Deborah, Abigail, and many others that we can applaud. This special instrument can also be a destructive tool if the vessel has a crooked and twisted heart. Samples of such record are for our admonition, like Eve, Jezebel, Miriam speaking against Moses, Dina, Leah, and a number of unnamed women, such like the activities of Potiphar's wife. The scriptures is loaded with the fruits of life by the virtuous woman, as recorded in Proverbs 31. But it also contains the tactics and strategies of the seductive and harlot woman as we find in Proverbs chapter 7. The humanity of humanity brings a wealth of resources to the human world, including care, companionship, compliment, concern, comfort, companion, connection, commitment for life. Communication, completeness, cheerful, character, consultant, cooking, cakes, and children. 
the humanity of humanity. First area that I want to deal with this morning is what I call leverage in Adam. Leverage in Adam. In Genesis chapter 5 and verse 2, it declares, Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day that they were created. In the original design of man, there was a male Adam and a female Adam. The female Adam did not have a separate name. Their name was Adam. So when God called Adam, he was calling, yes, the male man, but he was calling all of man, male and female. So in the original environment, there was not a separate name, but rather both names are Adam. Sometimes when you go to the public sector or public office, they will ask who you are and you will say, well, Mr. and Mrs. And you'll indicate the name. Because in reality, the female man named is wrapped up inside off and this is where you have the original environment that indicates the mr and mrs are you there with me all right now in the creation or in the manufacturing of the woman you will notice that the bible records in chapter 2 and verse 22 that god made and the idea of made in the original is to build or to make repairs now, when we were looking last week at the mailman, God was squeezing it into shape. So the manufacturing process was to squeeze one, and the manufacturing process of the female is to build up the other. Are you there with me? So the creation or the manufacturing process is different when it comes to a woman. The second creature, which is a woman in the original, also means the curved one. Or a support beam for others to rest on. So that's why sometimes when your children come home and they would have all of the battles of the day, they come and they rest on mommy. It's a support beam. A support mechanism. Because she's a kind of man, it means therefore that she is also part of mankind. Call their name Adam. As a woman, you'll recognize that one of your core goals is to be a helper to help another. But if the man is not engaged in anything, what are you going there to assist? Are you there with me? I know sometimes, you know, when numbers start to run up and you feel your biological clock is running out. You may want to get desperate and want to lay hands on me on the next fella that pass. But one of the critical elements that is there is to ensure that he is involved already in something so that you are able to come alongside and be able to assist. If no assistance is required, then he's not in a position or he's not ready as yet to be able to get help. Are you there with me? In your Bible, she comes across his part. Next slide, please. Eve comes across Adam's part. We find the same thing in Genesis 24 and verses 62, where you have Rebecca is brought across the pathway of Isaac. On the earth, the best mirror of God on the earth is a man and woman relationship. Best mirror on the earth. Because it represents the original family of God and represents also the family on the earth. And that's why you find that this one man to one woman is one of the number one thing that has been attacked. Last week I made mention and I shared with you that how the male man, if you are right standing, upright, uh, person, male men are the target of the enemy. And the other thing that's the target of the enemy is also the one man, one woman relationship. Now I find something interesting that created the environment for this. There were three levels of life in the original world. There were things that God did it that he saw it to be good. Everybody say good. 
Then there were things that he did that he found it to be very good. And interestingly, he also saw things that were not good. Come with me. So even in the original world, it have good things, it have very good things, and they have some things that are not good. And one of the things that he discovered that was not good is that the man should not be alone. Are you there with me? All right? That's why Proverbs chapter 18 verse 22 says, Whoso findeth a wife finds a what? A good thing. Because you need a good thing to fix something that is not good. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. And more than that, why do you obtain favor in the Lord? Is because you're, you're bringing it up to the things that are good. Are you there with me? All right? So, if you feel you're on an island and you know you're done with this and you don't want to have any man in your life or any woman in your life, it ain't good. Because it is not part of original design. In Proverbs 31 and verse 10, in describing... Uh, one of the personifications of woman, it actually refers to a woman as being a woman soldier. A woman soldier. That's why you find that there's some task a woman can take on and she takes full charge of it. Example, the kitchen. You know, you know the kitchen is like a woman's office? When the kitchen is in a drama, it's like if your hole is like a computer crash in the office. She always carries the name of another person, not her own. We find this, for example, in Luke 17 and verse 32. Jesus, in referring to the incident of Lot wife, said three words. Remember Lot wife. We don't call the woman name at all. Lot name gets called. And uh, as a member of humanity, you need to always remember that no matter where you go, you carry, the, you carry the, the glory, you carry the name of somebody else. Prior to marriage, it's your husband's, your father's name. After marriage, it's your husband's name. So you always carry. They my children were to do anything. They say, look, Pastor Shadrach, you're doing that. Night time, they forget all of them names. <laughs> so remember, Lot's wife. We find the evidence as well with Potiphar wife as well. Now, when man was created or the original man was created, he was created from the dust of the earth. The scientists have now discovered that the crust of the earth or the dust of the earth contains 59 elements that is present in the human body. So you may feel dust may not have value. But do you know it takes a whole different uh, blood cells or a whole different chemistry makeup to make fingernails and toenails as opposed to making hair. Are you there with me? Or making teeth. So dust is of great value because it tells you therefore of the composition that is used in so when God was making man yes he was using one of the weaker elements on the earth but even the weaker element had a number of components that would be necessary for the entire lifespan of man to be able to operate in all that you have. For example, if I were to take out all of your blood vessels and stretch them out, every human being has over six miles of blood vessels in your body. Again, of course, six being the number of man. Bring up the other chart for me. So in your body, there is oxygen, there is carbon, there is calcium, there is sulfur, there is magnesium. All of these things make up the entire body that is there. So when you may feel as if you are not of great value, just remember that you carry at least 59 elements in it that is used. For manufacturing all type of things in our world. God combined 59 elements for us to be able to live in our time. Second thing I want to share with you is what I call the amazing rib. The amazing rib. 
In Genesis 2 and verse 22, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto him. Again, like I said, the manufacturing method here is that a woman was made or to build up or to make repairs. She was designed inside of Eden. The home is the heart of a woman's world. Adam, on the other hand, was made outside of Eden and brought into Eden. But the female man was manufactured, or place of location was in Eden. Manufactured in Eden. The first man, or the first male man, had a female man in him. So the original pregnant person was a male man. God had to do surgery to separate what was in his womb from him, if I should use that technical term. So the original man had the womb man in his womb, and that's when she came out, she came out as a womb man. That's why he no longer have the womb. Man. <laughs> so we have a female man with a womb. Hence she is referred to as womb man. In other words, then a man with a womb. And that's why he could coin the word woman. Because the W-O there is actually connected to woman. Or womb man. Are you there with me? You all got that? So don't go around teaching at how woman means woe be unto man, yeah? I will lay hands on you. Bring up the next icon. So we have a female man with a womb, hence is referred to as a womb man or woman. First Corinthians 11 and verse 3 puts it this way. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Now in the original, one of the original meaning for the word head there does not mean only on top. But it actually means source or origin. What is used or where it originally came from. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Are you there with me? Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. In verse 11, nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of God. Matthew Henry, the great commentator, said it this way, and I'm sure you have heard this statement over and over, but nobody never tell you who said it. Eve was not taken out of Adam's head to top him or to be on top of him, neither out of his feet to be trampled on by him, but on his side to be equal with him, under his arm to be protected by him, and near his heart to be loved by him. There are 206 bones in the human body and the only bone that can naturally regrow when it is removed is the rib bone. The rib bone. If removed, it can regenerate. Hear this. They can use this in the rib. They can use the DNA that is in the rib bone of any human being. We grow kidney, heart, lungs, or any organ in the human body. No other bone allows that capability. No other bone. Now, when I looked at the word, at the word uh, bone, I just thought, you know, it's a nice spelling for us to be one. God use a bone so you can remember to be one. Are you there with me? 
Now you have B1 complex. The flexibility of the rib bone is one of the best candidates for bone marrow transplant, stem cells, and to grow any organ. The rib is a connecting bone that shows relationship. I'll say that again. The rib is a connecting bone that shows relationship. Now, one of the number one tentacles that comes out of the life of the female man is the need to connect to people. Relationships. Relationships. Jesus came not only to restore the male man, but also the female man as well. Because remember, it was all of humanity that fell. But I want to just take a few, just a slide or two, and just show you. In his restoration, he wasn't only rest restoring Adam, but he was also restoring Eve. He is called the seed of the woman to restore the humanity in humanity. So yes, he came as a male man. But running through his blood veins, because he did not have a human father, but rather a divine father. He was called the seed of the woman. Are you there with me? Seed of the woman. On the cross, the body is broken by the crucifixion as he is bleeding and leading. See, only a woman could understand that concept. And on the cross, he could be a person that continues to lead. While he's there on the cross, he can recognize and tell John, he says, listen, from today, let Mary be your mother. And from today, John is going to be her son. Are you there with me? He can be bleeding and leading. In Psalms chapter 34 and verse 20, it declares, he keepeth all his bones. Everybody say, keep all your bones. Not one of them is broken. So while his body is torn and his body is broken, part of the job on the cross is to get wounded but not have one single bone broken. Because he has to protect the humanity in humanity while he is restoring the, 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 the Adam that has fallen. Are you there with me? Every relationship is protected. Every relationship is maintained. None of his bones is broken. John 19, 34. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side. And forward came there out blood and water. In the same way Adam had a surgery done on his side. Is the same way that Christ had a surgery done on his side. But in, in verse 36, John 19, For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. Are you there with me? So while the body of the male man was ripped, was battered and bruised, in the midst of that housing, he also ensure and he also protected and he also guard even down to the whipping, the carrying of the cross and being pierced that none of his bones are broken. Are you there with me? Every relationship is guarded. The amazing rib. Christ on the cross brought us equal. Again in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Gentile. There is neither bound nor free. There is neither male nor female. He called their name Adam. Are you there with me? For we are all one in Christ Jesus. So the concept of the biblical marriage goes back. To being one man and one woman. And I'm always amazed that in a generation of the most advanced knowledge, technology, and a society that has continued to be modern, we have to teach people if there's a man, you should be looking for a woman. If there's a woman, you have to be looking for a man. Who will I ever taught? We'll have to go back 
They're telling you what is innate here, naturally. There is no greater good in the world than motherhood. The influence of a mother in the lives of her children is beyond calculation. Every one of us here can remember and reflect on the impact of a woman in our lives in one way or the other, beginning from your own mother all the way to even school and other parts of society. The amazing rip. Third area I want to deal with is what I call the desire of the damsel. Now, if we have some apartment buildings around a park, and in the center of the park there is a green tree, and in one apartment there is a man, and he's looking out the window at the green tree, and opposite there is a woman in another apartment looking out at a window at the same green tree. Let's complicate it a bit. The man tint his glass or his window blue. And the woman tints her glass or window reddish or pink. What color do you think they will see the green tree? <laughs> the experts say, for those who research the mechanics of the brain, says that all men see the world through a blue glass. And all ladies see the world through a pink or red glass. You ever notice when they're selling baby products, they tell you blue for boys and pink for girls? Where do you feel like come out with that for? And can you imagine the everyday argument if they were to pick up their cell phone and discuss what is the color of the green tree? What do you think they'll be seeing? Perspective is looking out at your window to a green tree. What color do you think they will see? In basic design, it is said that the male man is a left brain creature. Most active part of his brain, whereas a woman is a right brain creature. A male man is ego-structured, whereas a woman is emotional-structured. Ask a question to a man, he tells you, I think. Ask the same question to a woman, number one line of the first two words, say, I think. Because you are emotionally based. Men operate by sight as the place of appeal. Woman, on the other hand, is by feel or touch. Actually, feel and touch is the same. That should be feeling and hear or hearing and touch. The average man speaks 5,000 words a day. And the experts say that the average woman speaks 25,000 words a day. I'll tell you why. Because a man is general vision, whereas a woman is detailed vision. So because you're getting into details, you need more words to be able to say the same thing. Sometimes my wife cook and she asks me how the meal is. I'll say good. But then I just have to remember she wants to get details on the rice, the peas, the chicken, the drink. <laughs> the color the lettuce, the color the watercress. <laughs> Detail vision. When you're hungry and belly first, you're studying what it looks like. Men will build buildings or houses. Women will convert them into homes. To a man, every aspect of life is like rooms. Everything is in a room. And when we exit one room, we shut that door and leave one inside of that room there. But a woman, on the other hand, is like one big apartment. And everything is a shelf across the entire room. And anything that disturbs the room disturbs everything in that one room. It's 
So if the tablecloth don't match the curtains, it affects the meal. <laughs> Mailman, temper is immediately expressed. Female man piles it. It's what we call piling temper. Well, let me tell you this, ladies. Let me give you a quick thing. Men delete everything from their memory after seven days. <laughs> after seven days, that goes into a backup storage. But these, on the other hand, will remember things. Some I carry back my wife to one of these restaurants. She said, do you remember the last time I was here? And I'm like, when was this? Five years ago? Eight years ago? That got deleted or that already got packed into storage. Piling temper. That's why sometimes when you hear some mothers get vexed and they start to share licks. They beat your skin for things that are two and three years ago. Because <laughs> they pile it up and when it crumbles, it crumbles. Men are generally motivated by love and sex. Women are motivated by love and romance. You get a candle out, you get flowers and so on. And the flowers influence the meal, influence the, the event. Men, on the other hand, have a hurts. They need to cry. And that's why a lot of men tend to die earlier. Because they, they are, they, they, the experts say the more you cry, the longer you live. That's why the Bible has a whole verse, Jesus wept. Men use it. You know what people see you cry? Go behind a go over a tree in a bush somewhere. Cry. They will live longer. It helps with the healing process. Female man, on the other hand, express certain pain. They cry more quickly. It is said that it is the number one weapon sometimes of some women to cry. Get attention quick, but they live longer as well. In both worlds, both behind the blue glass and the red glass, we don't walk by sight, neither do we walk by feeling or touch. In God's provision, we walk by faith, not by sight or feeling. So both individuals in your communication needs to come out of your world and be able to see what it is like. Now I find this one quite interesting. Bring up the next one, please. What type of colors do men see? What type of colors do women see? Let me show you. This morning I saw Adonaya taking up her markers. Could I just get a pack of markers? She bring markers to color. I am at least seeing five different kind of yellows here. Four different type of blue. Three or four different type of brown. All ice markers. The color one picture. In a man's world, a lemon is a fruit. Lime is a fruit. Grape is a fruit. But all of these are varying shades. Thank you. And I'm sure if we go in a store, she wants more colors. Men will see, so what will cover a wider spectrum? They will see uh, in the one kind, strawberry. Strawberry for me, some of you go in the fridge and eat, in our color. Yet it is a color in a woman's world. So they see a plum. All of these. Sea green, green, yellow. I thought you had green and yellow. Dark green, fresh grass. All of these. Shows the wide variety of what a woman's eye is able to see that a man do not. A difference, their language may be the same, but they use different uh, methods of communication. Men will avoid eye contact, talk for their, about their status. They move from decision to discussion. They are very talkative in public, but quiet in private. They fight for fun. They trouble talk, they will avoid because they feel it will risk their status. Woman, on the other hand, will use eye for contact. 
talk to for solidity. They will move from discussion and then to decision. See, men will make a decision and then talk about it. Women like to talk about it and then make a decision. Are you there with me? Quiet in public, but very talkative at home or on the phone. May fight, but it's never for fun. <laughs> and if there is trouble to talk, they'll normally use it to create a rapport. All right? Now, in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16, part of the sharing out of the pizza based on the curse that was going to hit the earth. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow. Thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire, everybody say desire, shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. I saw this ad, I think I remember seeing this on somebody's uh, t-shirt as well. And they were connecting all of the varying experiences that a woman goes through that begins with the word men. Then they were saying that the woman's problem begins with men. Actually, you have it partially right. You have to understand that the reason why those are connected is because you were taken out of man. It helps you remember the original where you came from. Out of man. So a woman will naturally allow a man to rule over her who her blood has been spilled upon. Her desire is to be or to him. Her sexual encounter creates a soul tide with a person as the two becomes one flesh. And that is why God's original plan is always to ensure that you have it within the confines of marriage. Because fire must only be lit when you have a fireplace in place. Are you there with me? God created sex to work between a man and a woman within the parameters of marriage. That's why we have the sessions that we do on afternoons right now. It is designed to tie or to seal two into one. Sexual encounters is binding and it is not designed to be broken. For those of you all that are single... When you plan to get married or when you're getting married, understand that there is no way out. I always tell people divorce is not a solution. It's just a next problem that shows that you have a problem. You actually have one way out. It's until death do us part. This thing is going to go down until one of us die. Either you enjoy it until you die or you fight until you die. <laughs> God did not create you to become one flesh with several different people. He made one man, one woman to become one flesh. Are you there with me? When a woman gets pregnant, it is the only time in the human experience that a human being has two bloodlines running through a system. And that's why you have all of the sickness that comes with that. Because there is a clash of the bloodlines. Some qualities of a godly woman. Praise daily, build up her family. Woman must speak with wisdom. Read the word daily. Display godly conduct. Be a doer of God's word. Has a healthy fear of God. Must be gentle and a quiet spirit. Is obedient to what God tells her and to do and not to do as recorded in Proverbs chapter 31. Qualities of a real woman will continue. She's humble. She has goals. She's forgiven. Has standards. Whoever drop your standards. Always have standards. Strong mentality. So willing to admit your mistake. Enjoy helping people. Because at the end of the day, a woman is like a helper. These are some and many of the other characters that is a real woman. Now I want to show you one verse 
I now realize I didn't put in inside of here. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 20. Could you just pull that up on the screen for me? Genesis chapter 3 and verse 20. Now, when sin, sin entered the human race in Genesis chapter 3, and you will notice when sin entered, it created separation. In the beginning, you had, and their name was called Adam in the day that they were created. This is the first time she actually gets her own name. And it happens after the entrance of sin. And Adam called his wife Eve. Prior to the entrance of sin, she did not have her own name. Because they were so in one and in unity and one mind and in togetherness. She was also all that Adam is. Are you there with me? But one of the proofs of sin is that you also have where she has her own name. Sometimes when a woman real in love and she real adores husband and she has boasts to go with her husband name in places. Recently my wife went to, went to do some business and the persons and them who were at that church remember that I came years ago and did a seminar. So when she realized that she immediately switched. I'm Shadrach wife. Because it becomes currency. Are you there with me? The other thing that I want to show you, and young ladies, let me tell you what is the biblical pattern for life. And Adam called Eve his wife. Or Adam called his wife named Eve because she was the mother of all living things. God's original biblical pattern is this. You are supposed to be a wife first before a mother. That's the pattern. Now I know because sometimes you may make persons might have made decisions in life that will have sent that in the opposite direction. And then what you have now is that we have to repair something that was not originally how it's supposed to run. Are you there with me? But I need to teach you what is the original biblical pattern. And the original biblical pattern is that you are supposed to be wifers, mother next. Are you there with me? We have a few people quiet. Everybody else quiet. That is Bible. And if we teach that, half of the problems in our world today with our young people will not be where it is now. You are called to be a wife first. Get a mother. Fourth area I want to share this morning. Yearning for love. I found a very interesting passage of scripture in the life of Jacob. This is really what I call the original biblical desperate housewife. <laughs> you are soap opera, he has soap opera. You are you are, as we'll say, internal commerce. Genesis 29 and 30. First time I read this, I said, what is going on here? Now, Jacob had went to his father-in-law. And after working there for a period of time, he recognized, or he saw a girl that he liked, but it was his second daughter. And he worked for her for seven years. And on the, on the night of the wedding, the father-in-law swapped the girls. And in, in the tradition of the East, you don't watch the girl face until sunrise next day. <laughs> so the next morning, he realized, is the wrong girl. And he went to his father-in-law and he quarreled. What is this you do? You deceived me. She says, well, he says, well, you didn't know we have a law. No, you're telling me we have a law. 
we must give the first girl first. So then he asked, how can I get the one that I really want? See, I had to walk seven years again. Jacob can't be a Trinidadian. Me, I do that. <laughs> Ask Sarah, when I went to her father and we talked, I said, one year. So he's a public figure. We are tired of saying, one year. Beg for a year and a half. I see, right, at least it was less than seven years. So he ended up after that with these two women. But when he married the two women, they had what was called a chief maid that take care of them. So he had two other ladies in the mix as well. That down the road, them ladies now decide to lend them first girl or deputies to husband. So all of a sudden, you have four women around this man's life. Now, God's original plan is always one man and one woman. Huh? So rather you love bad or you didn't love bad or she was the one that give you a quiver in your liver and make you shiver. Or not, who you married is the one that God respects. In the verse here, we see that the Lord stepped in. And although Jacob loved Rachel, because he was married to Leah, which is his original wife, yes, it came true by deception, God honored her instead. Because God's plan remains God's plan. That's why you better make sure you marry the correct one. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. He shut the next woman womb down. Although he loved and that was the one he intended. The covenant that was done. I remember when I was getting married... We had a relative that came from abroad. I heard her talking on the phone and she says, this is no. This is the girl, first marriage. I shut that thing down one time. I said, we mean first marriage. You know, first marriage here yeah? is the only marriage. What first marriage? I remember talking with a very senior minister in our organization. He just come here sometime when we invite him. And his wife told me, she says, one day they went to a function. And she was introduced as the first lady. She said, I know you first lady. I says, only lady. What first lady are you telling me about? <laughs> now sometimes we can pick up concepts. And realize what we pull in our own lives. Eh? So let, let me give you the desperate housewives. Verse 32. And Leah conceived and bare a son. And she called his name Reuben. For she said, surely the Lord has looked upon my affliction. Now therefore my husband will love me. Now watch what the yearning for love is. She know that he don't like she, like the next woman. But she recognized the Lord fighting on she part. But because of covenant and because of design. But her goal is so that her husband will what? Love me. Verse 33. And she conceived again. And bear a son and said, because the Lord had heard that I was hated. He had therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. She don't mind becoming the factory. But the real purpose is she want she man for herself. Verse 34, and she conceived again 
and bear a son and said, No, this time will my husband be joined unto me because I have borne him three sons. Therefore she called his name Levi Jeans. <laughs> Tell them women and them, all, all them others, Where that? Again, three. Poke that in your craw. The desperate housewives. Well, it was so proper. That is so proper. Verse 35. And she conceived again. And bear a son. And she said, Now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah. And left. She left bearing. And I pull one verse out of chapter 30, verse 8. And Rachel said, With great wrestling have I wrestled with my sister, and I have prevailed. Now the next one, Sadamik. She called his name Daniel. I think this was done through one of the other women. So if you look at the chart, as we know, Jacob will have had 12 sons. We just see this. But we don't see the internal struggle in here. And at the end of the day, I want for you to understand something. God honored Leah. Because when you compare what Rachel was able to, to give, which was only Joseph and Benjamin, Leah, on the other hand, actually produced half of the population that Jacob needed. But in her battle for that, she was after the one thing, to be loved, not to be hated, and so that she could have the man that she married. Are you there with me? Having a child for a man does not mean that he will stay with you. Ladies, get that in your system and in your thinking. In Genesis 29 and 34, women fighting for a man. Who could make more babies for him? That's what you call boss baby. <laughs> Men are not motivated by a woman having, ch having a child for them. Now in the ancient family system, the rest or that rest upon the foundation of what was known as the house ban and the housewife. And I need to deal with this a bit. Because I've, had so, I've heard so many people particularly go up on our radio stations. And say that God never called them to be a housewife because they're not no wife to any house. In the original, the word house does not refer to a building or a home. But rather to a person. In Luke chapter 1 and verse 27, for example, we see, speaking about Mary, to a virgin exposed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. House in the original always referred to the foundation of the family line. Are you there with me? The reason why she was called a housewife was not to be a wife over a building. It was to be the, 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 the wife to the man. Because the man will carry the name of the house. Are you there with me? So you had the house ban, which will be the boundary that will actually set the parameters for life. And then you had the housewife. So from the house ban, you have your husband. And then you'll have the housewife. We have a lot of people being taught that there is no joy in being a housewife because you have to stay in a house all the days of your life. And while it's a place that you'll be, at the end of the day, you are the person's wife. The house is a person, not a building. First Peter chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. Likewise, he wife. Be in subjection to your own husbands. That if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. 
That means if somebody doing me here, the gospel, and you're sitting in the medical, or you're sitting in the market, or whatever, by your conversation, you could actually win people. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Whose adorning, let it not be with outward adorning of the plaiting of the hair, or the wearing of gold, or the putting on of apparel. But let it be with the hidden man of the heart. Everybody say the hidden man of the heart. That's the original Adam. Their name Adam. But let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible. Even the ornaments of a meek and quiet spirit. Which is in the sight of God of great price. Verse 5. For, this, for after this manner, in the old times, the holy woman also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husband. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Hey, Madam Sarah, you don't call me Lord, you die Bible. <laughs> Whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. That word there, yeah, knowledge in the original, means it's a science. It is an adventure to explore. It will take you a while to discover the horizon. In other words, then, your wife supposed to be an adventure to explore. Deal with them according to knowledge. Giving honor to the wife as unto the weaker vessel, because she's taken from Adam, from the raw material. And as being heir together, everybody say heir to so Although she's weaker, you'll notice you're heir together. Call their name Adam. And being heir together unto the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. One of the restrictions God put on the mailman is this. If you don't take care of your wife, and those of you all that are not married yet, when you get married, know this one thing. The day you ill speak, the day you rough up, the day you batter, the day you feel that you're big, and you want to abuse the one, God shut down your prayers. He put such value because they are one, it comes as if you're attacking yourself. I have never seen a man take a wood and beat up himself. Or a bat, or a belt, or a stick. And yet we find there's one to do it. We have had instances. Why you don't go in your, in, 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 in your room and take your own hand and well cough up your face? You're one flesh. It is who you are. So the scripture shows that God will shut down your prayers if you don't cherish and take care of what he has given to you. Ephesians 5 and verse 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of the Lord. So both individuals are required to do this. Our world rise or fall on our understanding of submission. Of all of the authorities of government, the boss, the pastor, the police, or whatever, a woman is only really responsible to submit into one person. That's her own husband. Nobody else. He, on the other hand, has to respond to everybody else, including God. Wives are required to submit to their own husbands in the atmosphere and environment of submitting to one another. Because it is under the umbrella of submitting to one another. Can you best tap into the resource of a two-way communication of utilizing the left brain and the right brain? This is God's plan for marriage. That's why some of the alternative lifestyle that has been proposed today will crash. Because it's more than just biology and gender. 
There is an original design that is it. Because there are some giftings that, uh, that one, gen, that one uh, species or one individual don't have that the other person possesses. Left and left, you'll get left out. Right and right, you'll get right off. He designed it left and right. So that he can have one mind. A woman is fully secure and will blossom and reach her highest potential in God and for her family in the environment of submission. God has set order in the earth and a large volume of blessing for a woman is designed to reach it through the channel of a man. It is the avenue for she to progress. If you don't have a father, an active father, husband, or even an elder brother, find a man that is, who is respectable and request him to be like a father figure to you. Of course, we know you have a perverted version of that today, what we call the sugar daddy. You don't need a sugar daddy. You need somebody that will watch out for your soul. God can only bless you in the atmosphere of submission under his divine order. Like I said before, head means source. In Luke chapter 18, we read the story of an unjust judge and a woman that had an issue. And she went to the unjust judge and made her plead continually. Because she recognized that in order for her to be able to tap into what God has, it has to be done through the channel that he has set up. And although he was crooked and unjust, he recognized that although he may not have regard for God or man, he had regard for her. Because she was actually tapping into divine, and he stood up and met her request. Elijah asked a woman for a cake. She was down to her last meal. She said that we was going to cook this and then we was going to die. But her willing to work or to allow a man of God to flow through or to bless him, she now was able to get the blessings that were needed in her own life. And she was able to survive the entire farming when the meal or the, 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 the vessel of meal did not fail. The experts say that submission can happen in two environments, by force or by love and affection. If it's any environment of force, you're going to have rebellion. Nobody is going to really be happy. They just do it out of duty. But in the environment of love and affection, a person will be able to blossom and also reach their potential. If the woman is taken from the man and the woman is a man with a womb, then she is secure in the womb of love of her husband. And that's the reason why male men, it is our job to ensure that we provide the right environment and we decide and block anything that will come to attack that. You don't allow any and anybody to talk to your family the way that they do or to wash them out. You put a stop to it. When the water bag of love is ruptured in the life of a man, there is pain. And you can even have abortion and miscarriage in the family and in the home. It is our job to ensure that there is an environment of love. Because the female man yearns for an environment of love. Finally, let me say this way. I have a few other quick thoughts, but I'll just throw in a nutshell. Seven greatest needs for wives. And this is taken by a researcher and author. Number one, it says love. Again, comes up as the main one in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 25. Attention. Wives want to be listened to. Protection. Wives want to be, want their husbands to be the defenders of the family. Many times, you know, things happen and you send a woman to talk. You want to go out and talk to? Make a stand. Security and commitment. A wife wants to know that you're going to be there forever. This thing we get into is death do us part. And one of the training that we did in the afternoon session, one of the counselors said that whenever you have a new couple who wants to get married, 
and a week or two before their marriage, he takes the couple down to the cemetery and he tells them to pick out a spot. And then he tells the young couple, this is his spot. And this thing you're getting into is marriage is until death do us part. One of us is going to put the other one going to go here. It will have no getting out. They want the security that you're going to be there until you hit the ground. One party is going to put the other party in the ground on that spot. It are no deputy, it are no outside, it are no second, it have no other. Are you there with me? Appreciation and value. Five. Women want to be valued for who they are as much as what they do. When a husband put his wife wish above everyone and everything except God, it gives his wife a sense of security and honor that every wife hungers for. I know there are times the job may pull a lot of your time. You could get some time, time off from the job to go and do your dental, to go and do your medical, to go by the lawyer, to do all kind of thing. Why does sometimes want to try to yeah, can't take some time off just to come home to show appreciation? The doctor more important than your wife? A medical check more important? So maybe take time off to carry the vehicle by the mechanic. Especially if you're working offshore and you're sure when you're onshore. She asks when you're coming home, you're sure? Because you're offshore? You're sure? You're unsure. And sometimes you make it feel as if the job is more important than the family. Your family does support the job. Yeah? Your job supports the family. You could fire the job any day and find another means of income somewhere else where you don't fire the family. I think I better say that again. You don't fire the family, you fire the job. You guard the family. Compassion. We can all, however, be kind, loving, and occasionally romantic, fellas. So when I go to the grocery, sometimes I pick up the chocolate. And then sometimes I don't pick up the chocolate. You want to watch the wait. When I come home, she's still asking for the chocolate. You bring any chocolate for me? But you know, tell me this morning you're watching your week. <laughs> it's a partnership. Wives don't want to do life alone. They don't want to do life alone. It's a partnership. And they must feel that their partner is on the ship. Not just an occasional passenger that pass by. The humanity of humanity. The work of the humanity in humanity includes a life as a wife. Her warm waits without wages, whether we wander, walk, or watch. Her wealth of skills is a weapon that can be waved against any wicked weeds against a family. She welcomes many during the week and weekends as she wins their welfare with her whisper. Whenever there is a window for wisdom, women will wire her wonders and witness to them. From worry to worship, this warrior can face the worst in the world and wrap any wound to make life worth it. Wow. That's what you call a wonder woman. Leverage in Adam. The amazing rib. Desire of the damsel. And yearning for love. Let's stand please. The influence of the lady. 
in your life. Understand that we are one in Christ and also one in Adam. God's original plan. And do ever feel, no matter where you are, that somebody can beat you down with their words. It is not what somebody says about you. It is what you accept in your heart and in your mind that can make the difference. Many times people can say things and you can let it bolt over your life. But for a lady, the place of the air is also the place of appeal. And therefore, it hits you at the place of appeal. That's why verbal abuse is one of the most destructive things to a woman. Because it hits the place of appeal. Before I pray for some ladies, and I'll do like I did last week in general. I want to first of all open the opportunity, first of all. For if there is any person that is here, including women and men. Because you can never truly function in the original design. If you don't understand. That you have to be in Christ and in God. We are one in Christ. But that means if you are outside of Christ. You are not one. You are still broken. And God loves to take the broken things. And be able to use it to restore individuals. If you have never made Jesus Lord over your life. I challenge you this morning. To make a step of faith. Because it's only in Christ you can get your identity, your dignity, and the passion that is needed to be successful. Without God, we are blind in this world. If you have never made Jesus Lord over your life, all eyes closed, all heads bow. Quickly lift your hand up where you can step to the altars. I will meet with you and I will pray for you. Let there be light. Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. It is not good that man should be alone. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil.
Adam. Where are you, Adam? I heard your voice in the garden. But I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid myself. Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. What is this you have done? The serpent deceived me. And I ate. Serpent. Because you've done this, you are more cursed than all cattle. And more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go. And you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman. And between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head. And you shall bruise his heel. I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you are taken. For dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Today we're going to be talking about my favorite topic, and that is the rib. Why is it my favorite topic? Because if you're trying to prove that the Bible is a supernatural book, there are certain key components to doing that. And I have found the rib as one component that nobody, I don't care who you are, you cannot debate the evidence I'm about to present you. We all know the story of Adam and Eve. Adam was created from the dust of the ground, and Eve was created from a rib bone from man. Now my question was always, why didn't God just use the dust of the earth again to create woman? So that's what we're going to be looking at. But think about something. What is the most important bond you can even think of on this earth? To me, it's, it's a mother and a child. Now why is that? It's because the child comes physically from the mother. It's part of her. So what better way than to take the bone of Adam and somehow be able to create a woman from him? Something that would be actually from him. Now, so what bone do you choose? First, let's look at a very interesting fact. I wanted, I was always curious about this. You know, if man is from the dust of the ground, really, 
then the components of man should be what's in the dust of the ground. Now, you can look this up anywhere, uh, but here are the elements present in the human body. Um, and in the Bible verse says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. These are the components you'll find in your body. It's amazing what's in there. I mean, things like iron and you know, bromine and lead and just all kinds of different things. Uh, of course, oxygen is the by far the biggest component. But what's interesting is all of these, every single one of them, um, can be found in the minerals on the surface of the ground. Now, it, it literally appears as if God, and I have no idea, this is just some picture I drew, but it looks like literally he could have reached down into the crust of the earth and come up with the chemicals needed. Now, I'm not saying literally just reach in there, but they're there. They're right here on the surface of the ground. Every chemical um, component, every element, I should say, that's in your body. There are 206 bones in the human body. 206. Only one. Let me restate that. Only one out of 206 will regrow if surgically removed correctly. You guessed it, the rib. One. Now think about that. 205 other choices. Now how did Moses know that the one bone that he would actually say that God had taken from the man to make woman, how would he know that's the one bone that would be able to regrow itself? Now you can look this up on any medical website that has to do with removing ribs. And I'll give you a little hint here. If you look up uh, sites that show people that have scoliosis, uh, they often remove one of the ribs and then that somehow balances things out. Now, it's very clear. If surgically removed correctly, the rib can regenerate itself, regrow. Now, there's no other bone. If you remove an arm, if you remove, you know, whatever bone you choose, it will not grow back. I mean, we know that. I mean, if you lose your arm, uh, it, it's gone. There's no regeneration process that the body naturally does. The rib, however, that is different. If surgically removed, correct. Genesis 2.21 And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And the man said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. So think about what this is describing. And you don't have to be an expert in biblical interpretation. You don't have to be a doctor, a medical doctor. Just I'm just a regular person. But when someone uh, causes someone to... Um, become so sleepy that you're able to remove a rib. To me, that's called a surgery, and that's called anesthesia. Um, you know, you can't use alcohol to put someone to sleep deep enough to where you can uh, remove a rib. So, to me, it looks to me like uh, whoever wrote this had some knowledge of the way someone would remove a rib. Now, granted, you could come up with an idea of how that would be done, that you'd need to cause some sort of a deep sleep to come on them, and then you'd, you'd, you'd close back up the flesh, just like you would in a surgery. But it's just amazing to me that he gets all this right. You know, anesthesia, that's not even developed until the 1800s. Um, he gets all of this right, and he takes the one bone out of the body. He removes it. It's the one out of 206 that regenerates itself. So this guy is not going to be left uh, missing anything. Now, did he do that because he knew that? Did he cause this to happen? It doesn't matter because either way, you have a strange coincidence that Moses would have picked the one bone out of 206 that regrows itself. But we can even take this a step further. Now... Bone marrow transplantation. I don't know if you're familiar with it. My brother's a bone marrow transplant specialist. Um, I don't have a lot of knowledge in that area, but what I do know is that bone marrow <clears throat> can
can actually be uh, infused back in 